Hello, wonderful person! Muhahaha! Halloween special. Let's talk about vampires. Okay, not really that kind of vampires, and actually something that does exist somewhere out there in real life. We're going to be talking about a type of a vampire that was actually discovered not so long ago, living on Galapagos Islands. That's right, this is going to be another educational video about something biological. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Galapagos Islands, located somewhere right here on planet Earth and popularized by the studies of the iconic Charles Darwin. But what makes these islands particularly interesting for biological studies or evolutionary studies are two main features. The islands here are remote and kind of different from one another, but despite their differences, for the most part life here is extremely inhospitable. It's extremely difficult to survive here for most living beings. In other words, this is not a paradise, and so any animal life living here has to adapt to very harsh conditions. Which, as a side note, is also important for various space studies, because we know that at some point, if humans live somewhere else, outside of the planet Earth, we're going to start adapting to those conditions, kind of similar to how life adapts on Galapagos. And one of the most famous, most studied, and most well understood examples of animal life living here are these tiny birds we refer to as Darwin's finches. A pretty common tiny bird that very likely arrived here just over a million years ago. And in this case, it was probably just a few birds that arrived at first, but eventually all of them spread to different islands and adapted to living conditions on each of these individual islands. And because the conditions here are actually quite different depending on where you go, mostly because the food on one island might be very different from the food on the other island, over time, over this one million years, the finches adapted to the environment by essentially changing their beaks. Some beaks were perfect for cracking nuts, other beaks were used for catching insects, but certain beaks became used for something entirely different. Some beaks turned these birds into vampires, literal vampires. They actually learned to drink blood from much larger prey. And so some of these finches became vampire finches. And that's basically your Halloween special. Wait, no, there's more. I really wanted to understand why. And more importantly, I wanted to understand what makes these finches so different from other finches living on other islands. And this is actually super important, once again, for studies like space studies. It helps us understand how different life adapts. So once again, in this case, this was the evolution of the beak. But the relationship between these two birds at first was probably much different. The bigger birds here are known as boobies. In this case, this is a Nazca booby. And though there are quite a lot of different types of boobies on the planet, a lot of them share this one type of behavior. They tend to stick around in their nests for a very long time and avoid leaving the nests no matter what. Now you can actually find these birds on most of the islands here, and they generally have nests all over the place. But in the northern part right here, there are these two islands, one called Wolf and one called Darwin, which are first of all extremely remote, but second of all are particularly inhospitable. If you look at the island here, it doesn't really have much water on it, and also doesn't really have a lot of opportunity for more complex food. They're the most remote and inhospitable of all of the Galapagos Islands. And they're also relatively small, less than square kilometer in size. But because they're so remote, it will take a bird quite a long flight to make it to the other islands. So generally, whoever lives here kind of sticks around for a pretty long period of time. And sometimes during rougher seasons, the water and pretty much all of the food on the island completely disappears. But somehow these boobies managed to survive and found a way to basically thrive here and to have their nests. But in the last half a million years, they've acquired a new neighbor, a neighbor that came from a much more distant island, and at first very likely relied on basically just eating insects, mostly because of the beak that it possessed. It was a very thin, very long beak, perfect for catching and consuming insects. And although there were probably some insects they ate at first, eventually the birds adapted to something a little bit more effective. They started to consume various parasites living on the skin of the bigger booby birds. Various ticks, various types of bugs, something that the boobies themselves would probably not be able to pick, but something that they obviously did not mind. This type of behavior is extremely common in a lot of different species. But obviously while picking these parasites off, chances are, sometimes, their pecking behavior would sometimes result in an open wound, obviously releasing blood in the process. And because, as I mentioned, there is not a lot of water on the island, the birds would not mind drinking it, eventually consuming more and more. And so at first this was a more or less mutual relationship. But over time something happened, and it's quite likely that finches eventually just stopped picking the insects completely, and instead adopted to just opening the wounds 
drinking the blood and then flying away, literally turning into vampire birds. And in this case, it looks like these finches learn to pierce the skin at the base of young feathers in order to access the blood directly. They literally became perfect parasites. And none of them no longer picked any more insects from the skin. But the analysis further showed that it wasn't really the only thing that they ate. They still ate a lot of other stuff, most likely more insects from other sources, and only about 10% of all of their nutrients came from the blood. But surprisingly, they really are vampire birds. And this came from the analysis of their internal gut. They possessed bacteria that were specifically evolved to break down blood cells and to release nutrients. Something that no other finch, actually no other bird, seems to possess. And so it's the biome of their gut that actually makes them vampire birds, vampire finches. With the other difference being a much pointier and longer beak compared to other birds. And so even though it very likely started as some kind of a mutual relationship, eventually they became parasites. And this behavior is particularly important for these birds during some of the harsher seasons. They really have nothing else to eat or to drink unless they drink blood from these boobies. But this only happens on these two islands, the Wolf Island and the Darwin Island that you see right here. None of this behavior was observed anywhere else on the planet, making this another unusual behavior only found on Galapagos, and another important case of how evolution can actually progress quite dramatically, especially in harsh conditions. But because of the size of the boobies, they generally don't really get affected by this too much, making this relationship kind of similar to what we have with mosquitoes. And so even though the boobies kind of tolerate them, they do try to get rid of them when there is a chance. But I guess what's more intriguing about these Darwin's finches is that their evolution is a constant process. It actually has never stopped. As a matter of fact, just a few decades ago, researchers discovered that some of the larger birds moved to a completely new island and have already started to evolve new features, making them a completely new type of a subspecies within just approximately 40 years. Once again, making Galapagos one of the most exciting places for studying biology and for studying evolution. But it's obviously something that one day might affect us as well, especially if we start to become interplanetary. For example, one day we might have a colony on the moon, we might even settle on Mars, and we might start living in extremely hard conditions where year after year our bodies will start to change as well. Now we obviously have no idea what kind of adaptations humans will have by living on other planets such as Mars, but just like with the finches, it's most likely going to start happening with our guts first. Our gut bacteria is going to change first and will then start affecting the rest of the body as well. But following this, we'll probably have other adaptations based on their local gravity or based on, I guess, what tools we use around us. Since the finches use beaks and their beaks change over time, maybe we'll have our hands change or maybe something else. Obviously, none of this is going to be instant and will take generations of people living in these conditions for all of this to take place. But by living on other objects in the solar system, it's quite likely that this is where our evolution will start to diverge. And we can learn so much about it from these finches on the Galapagos, including the unusual vampire finches. And that's pretty much it. The vampire birds in action. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, and happy Halloween, everyone. Also, stay wonderful. See you tomorrow. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.